bipartisan section at the Ontario Medical Association. And he says medication is only part of the treatment. If you only have medicine and you don't have the counseling services, these people become chronic mental health patients. But access to professional counseling is getting more difficult. I think it would be fair to start looking at this as a crisis within a crisis. Kingston area pharmacist Jen Baker says the provincial government should be alarmed by the trend. She's the head of the board of the Ontario Pharmacists Association. And to put it bluntly, people's lives are at stake. Baker says the long-term fix will involve more resources than just prescription drugs. Amanda Pfeffer, CBC News, Ottawa. Uh, I thought, let's listen to the news. Uh, I s kind of stopped or refrained myself from listening uh, to the morning news. I used to do that like every morning and now uh, I figure that they are biased and they try to manipulate your opinion, including the CBC News, which for me was a trustworthy source. Uh, maybe because it was part of the government or something, I don't know. But now it's... Uh, uh, I don't really pay attention to those guys. But today I thought, okay, let's... Uh, I feel I want to listen to you. And uh, before this one was about the veterans, how uh, Okay, they got screwed by uh, some government mistake, which it happens all the time. Uh, and now about uh, people, mental health, like people needing more uh, prescription drugs for mental health. And yesterday I went to a person who did a reading on my body, on my energy. And we were talking, it was like a small chat before the session. Um, she is doing that to calm down the person, to set the person before the, the reading. And it's an energy reading using a, a medical grade device. It's not like uh, one of those psychic readings, not at all. And the session did not involve any psychic abilities, any psychic powers or whatever, nothing. And we were talking about, uh, so mask on, her, she had mask on and of course me curious about this person. Um, I said, uh, are you afraid of getting sick or something? And she thought I'm uh, referring to me uh, who I'm supposed to wear mask and something and she thought I might suggest to take the mask off I said no, if you are afraid of the general situation of you getting sick from someone she said no, but this, that, that and um, she was a bit worried and I said yes, I had uh, some fear and anxiety mostly for my wife, not for myself I don't care about myself much I mean, I, I care, but I uh, I know I can manage my own health in in large limits. And she said, lots of people uh, have very high anxiety level. I meet clients. Uh, she does um, uh, probably as a second job or something, or as like a uh, a gig. Uh, I meet clients who have a higher level of anxiety and uh, he said, yeah, because we were talking about fear, how fear gets you anxious and fear uh, lowers your immune system. Um, yeah, we were talking, so how this media is directing you into fear, into lowering your capacity of uh, judging situations and uh, looking after yourself and your family so when you are in fear you start making poor decisions because it's fight or flight so we I, I kept saying about that in my other recordings that but that's the thing so she said like a lot of people uh, uh, got this problem it's like a newer newer problem it's anxiety level this like uh, this so, so let's not talk about should I use mask, not mask, should I believe it's a virus, should I believe in a conspiracy theory or something. Uh, to me, 
if the government allows the media to bias the news to make you think certain things uh, to me that uh, and if the government doesn't see that you know people get sick mentally not physically like uh, I will put it a balance Oh, I'm getting this many people dying. Okay, that's like another flu or something, maybe nastier flu that is kind of uh, doing some uh, natural uh, process of taking the weak out. So it might sound it might sound uh, not nice, but that's the nature of things for millions of years. That's why we are here, because otherwise. The populations, the old population before us, long, long, long time ago, would get sicker and sicker with uh, a enhance the ability of the viruses and bacteria in the predators to multiply, and the humans would not survive. So the stronger would survive and not us but because we made it because we have such a perfect machine uh, capable of dealing with so, so many external uh, troubles it means that the design is really really good and that design of a cleaning up the weak cleaning up the old and stuff it might sound harsh for us because we were taught about love and how to love and we, we were uh, engraved in the DNA how to find love is all this about survival uh, uh, which is different topic I'm not getting into that why we need to love why it's, love is important bonding connection and stuff like that so those things those things are built in and also suffering, it's a lesson that also does something to our body, like physical body. Su suffering or, uh, or uh, a loss of life or uh, uh, how to lo losing someone you love is part of the creation design. So it, it was known, okay, you, if you are going to suffer because someone is going to die or you are going to be sad or something, let's do something in your body to not destroy the body it's like a, it's a smart design so they they looked into that okay people have to leave because we won't want to have the population grow and you know we want to stabilize kind of a population or maybe a slow growth uh, until the earth has enough supply but for that we need to make this biological machine that is feeding, it's surviving, it's multiplying, and at some point it's decaying, getting old and dying. So we have this biological, or I have, or God, or who, who, whoever made a human body, a, or the whole ecosystem, we have this thing, and we have to deal with a, with a loss, with a grief. And they engraved in the DNA in a pro in that program they integrate what happens to the body and it's not going to do something uh, bad to the body unless the person is uh, one of those self-destructing and oh yeah my mom died and, and I'm I'm going to kill myself or I'm going to suffer so on. no there, there are some processes in the body that actually are being uh, programmed and they are uh, foreseen by at, at the beginnings when they design the DNA uh, when you have grief, something happens that prevents you self-destruct. Now, uh, about this virus and all that, uh, and anxiety, so people have to deal with loss. The virus does something, whatever it does, cleaning up or uh, killing people or uh, taking out the weak, uh, but also it takes out, takes down those who are in self-destructing mode. And fear puts you into this type of st state. So first, it's affecting your 
uh, mental health, then if you have a mental health problem, you cannot take care of your body. So first, you it's lower your awareness about what you need to do and who you are in what's important for you in, in regards to surroundings in regards to social life in regards to a uh, health and you know a uh, self-defense and all those things so if you have a mentally uh, ill body or i mean uh, no uh, if you have a ill mind uh, thinking first through thinking so you put fear in yourself you buy those thoughts a uh, fearful thoughts that you get from the news but actually in the first who made you to listen to the news since you kind of know I have okay so now if we are looking at the weak people the, the ones who don't know they are easily manipulated what can I do now sometimes in this type of situation uh, when lots of people are not capable in, uh, intellectually to distinguish between uh, what's good food and what's bad food so food for the mind that's a, a the news one of the sources of the food for the mind is the news another source of food for the mind is the friends and the surrounding society those are coloring you who you are so if we look at us let's say we I ate for 20 years the same type of soup I went to the same type of workplace nothing changes so let's say if I am that person and I assign that to that person a color now if that person uh, get influenced by someone it's like a, I put a droplet of ink into my what colored water so it's the same thing so if I allow that ink from the news doesn't matter what color the ink has bright dark red but doesn't matter it still colors my who I am the, the it, my my energy and it's affecting my thinking right and my thinking is affecting my physical body because like I said it's one one simple way to understand it if I am screwing up my mind like a fear and all that stuff I cannot look after my body with my conscious mind but also subconsciously uh, so fear is one good example uh, it triggers uh, adrenaline it triggers all sorts of other hormones that uh, in a constant excess so if we constantly bombard our body with a state of uh, awareness and fear at some point uh, those adrenals get tired they, they are they, out out of their normal capability of producing the adrenaline same like it happens with uh, people who eat sugar 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 it happened to me uh, I'm, I'm a, a good now but I almost got in a diabetes because since I was a kid I kept eating sweet stuff and I know why but anyway so that's a different topic so while exposing my body with uh, surges of dopamine it was good to to eat chocolate to eat this and that so we crave for these things and we teach our body we program ourselves to crave for the sweets and now you see these people uh, eating the sweet uh, American diet uh, because it tastes good gives you good feeling and so it, you keep dumping uh, sugar in your body and guess what uh, an organ in your body uh, has to deal with with, uh, with that amount of sugar and what it does it does uh, produce the insulin so the insulin is going to flood your bloodstream uh, taking care of the extra sugar because it's toxic for you uh, anything that's in in excess or outside of the norms the body can process uh, get you sick and that insulin uh, the gland that makes uh, insulin gosh I forgot the name of the thing that makes insulin it's like a what and I know what it is I forgot the name it's like a 
What makes insulin? Anyway, so where is that name? So that organ slowly, slowly dies, and that's the definition of of uh, diabetes. When that, like one of the types of diabetes, when one of the uh, when when that gland, that organ is not capable of making more insulin so you have to inject external insulin so same thing with fear and anxiety and all those things they you get sick you get physically sick and is it good for you i don't know it is is it good for the society not for sure uh, i mean it, it's not good for sure and uh my point is that the government is aware or maybe it starts to be aware, but does it do anything? No, not yet, because they probably are overwhelmed or maybe they have an agenda. I can say that. Uh, I can make a conspiracy theory, but I am not doing that today. Uh, so that's, that's the thing. The, someone has to take action and save these poor souls who are not capable or no, they don't have the intellect or something to stay away from a bad thoughts for bad news or something so back in Romania when I was a kid uh, the news came from uh, sources that were censored by the government agents so it was a person or probably a big office or something people censoring the news what my people what our uh, ca comrades comrades <laughs> are supposed to know and we had a, in grade, in high school, yes, we had a, I think it was a weekly class about uh, politics or something like that, news, what happened. And I was supposed to know some internal news from, from our country and uh, maybe something from the communist countries or something. I never liked the, the, the subject, I, I don't know, it was, I was lazy to read the news, other people probably were curious, what happened, what happened, uh, uh, I don't need to know, I don't care, so I always had one news that I read long time ago because uh, my grandfather was German, so it was a news from uh, Western Germany where uh, the workers at the a factory uh, were in on strike and it was some uh, kind of international news. Yeah, those guys from the textile, like uh, some sort of a manufacturing, textile manufacturing facility were on strike in Germany and that was the only news probably I knew. Oh, of course, I was listening to a free Europe uh, radio station and I was not uh, I, I was not sharing that in, in a class because we had a classmate whose dad was uh, uh, a secret service police officer uh, everyone knew because yeah uh, you had you had to have some secret service around and this guy is that he was the guy who was watching the people everyone knew the guy he was kind of you know keeping an eye he dressed into uh, plain clothes but uh, those kind of uh, you know you recognize those anyway so uh, that was a censorship back in Romania when we thought oh yeah stupid communist yeah, no we don't like it we don't like it but I kept thinking I said after a while, I kept thinking, say, you know what? Freedom is good, but it's not too good. Then where some things leads, because slowly, slowly, even the freedom manip can manipulate, or the systems that promote freedom and democracy and stuff can manipulate uh, weak minds. Because the way I see those who get into power, they want something. Some people want just fame or they have big ego or whatever, but other people want something. And in order to get something done, they need these poor souls who are follow blind, blind followers. And now if you have a state media, 
uh, that is working for you, then it's much easier. So I don't want to say, I don't, I don't think the, the current government uh, is okay to have people getting sick of anxiety and be living in a state of fear to be able to control their emotion, emotions much easier because the communist uh, governments were doing exactly that. So having some, not a state of fear, but knowing that if you step outside of your boundary and if you do something stupid, you will get busted pretty, be, pretty good and was not good for us. But I was not living in a state of anxiety all the time. It was a happy life, the way we could make it out of the uh, situation around. So that's kind of a, uh, was long time ago. And the body and the mind adapted with that system. Uh, of course, you want, you, li you know, you live in a cage, you want to get out, but that doesn't really may get you that sick. But now you have a sudden anxiety and uh, people rely on the government and the government because they pass the responsibility their own responsibility to the big uh, big shots big guys they voted for and now they uh, this government fails of protecting people from this type of state of fear and anxiety and mental health so that was on the news bye bye